My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Did it ever happen to you, perhaps when you were young, or it could happen to you when you're older too, that you can't sleep because you're scared? Maybe you watched a scary movie that you weren't supposed to watch, or an older sibling told you a ghost story that really spooked you. Or, for some reason, the imagination just starts to run wild. And you imagine things that that don't give you peace, that uh, they make you uneasy, they make you afraid. And maybe, especially in the case when you were young, maybe you'd go to your mom or dad and say you can't sleep because you're scared. And the advice that you might have gotten could have been, well, think, think happy thoughts. Think about good things. Think about things that make you happy. Think happy thoughts. It's a phrase that can sometimes be made fun of a little bit or taken lightly. But actually, as I was thinking about it, it's good advice. In fact, I think it's great advice. But it can be hard sometimes. It's hard to get those other thoughts out of our head. Something that really stirred up our fear or our emotions, other emotions. But if we're able to focus on happy thoughts, on good thoughts, we can drown out the other bad thoughts and refocus on the good. The reason I thought about all this was because I was reading what Jesus said to his disciples. What you said, Lord. This is a time of conversation that we're having with you. You said, A good person out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good. But an evil person out of a store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks. And the reason I thought about happy thoughts is because we can be in control of what is in my head and in my heart. And different thoughts can occur to me. You know, critical thoughts, impure thoughts, good thoughts. And I I might not have too much control over what first shows up there, right? What first appears in my thoughts. But I do have control over what I dwell on and what I believe in my heart. And that impacts how I act. That impacts what I say. Right? Because I'm acting upon or saying something based on what I truly believe or what is, what is in my heart. So if we are going to produce good and not evil, as you want us to, Jesus, I need to have good in my heart. I need to have good in my head, in my thoughts, not evil. Jesus, I want to produce good, to do good deeds and good actions, and thus I want to have that in my heart. So when we tell Jesus this, he might respond to us by saying, Wonderful, I want you to do good deeds as well, many of them. But what's in your heart? What are your thoughts about other people? What are your judgments? Do you tend to be critical? Do you forgive? Do you try to understand? Do you hold on to grudges and dwell on them? Do you come to conclusions quickly about the motives of why other people act. We can have all kinds of thoughts go flying in and out of our head. 
good ones and bad ones. And the big question is, not so much which thoughts go flying in and out of my head, but which ones are the ones that I dwell on? What are the ones that I believe? What are the ones that I make my own? That's the big question. That's the big question. Because what I think about others, or what I'm convinced about concerning others, will impact my actions towards them. Each person has his or her faults, that's without a doubt, as do you and I. But I also know that that person is a daughter or son of God, that that person is loved by Jesus Christ, that that person is loved by his or her mother. Jesus, you treat people this way, with, with understanding, with forgiveness, and, you know, while we know this is true, right, we see it. We, we see it all the time in, in Jesus' life, that he had compassion on the crowds, that he forgives, um, he forgives everybody who wants to be forgiven, right? How he treats the woman who is caught in adultery with, with understanding and kindness. But someone might say to me, and it's happened, well, what about the Pharisees? Because he is really tough on the Pharisees. He's really harsh on the Pharisees. He calls them hypocrites. He calls them whitewashed tombs. And I was thinking about that. I said, that's true. He comes down pretty hard on them. And I, I wonder why. And, and I think, maybe you have a better answer or another answer, but one answer which, come, which came to my mind, and Jesus, we're talking with you, and, I, and I'm going to use your own words. Words that Jesus himself spoke to us. Jesus, you said, Stop judging that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged. And the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. For as you judge, so will you be judged. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a big one for you and me, for all of us. The Pharisees were very demanding on people. They were very stringent judges. They were like that with Jesus, right? Remember the times when, when Jesus like performed miracles on the Sabbath, right? On the holy day? He cures people on the Sabbath? And the Pharisees get mad at him. You can't do that on the Sabbath. You can't do any work on the Sabbath. Right? You see you see how tough they are? You know, how, 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 how much they pay attention to the letter of the law and are kind of blind to the good that's being done to somebody by Jesus? So then, Jesus is judging them the way that they judge other people with that same demanding spirit. Right? You're going to be demanding on people? Okay. I'll be demanding on you too. And Jesus has a right to be demanding. He has all the right to do that. So this could be a great wake-up call for you and for me. How do I judge? And is that how I want Jesus to judge me? Because if I am critical of people, if I really believe the thoughts that come into my head about other people's bad intentions and so I, I'm harsh with them in my own heart, oh gosh, Jesus, I don't want you to be harsh with me. <laughs> because if you're harsh with me, then, then I'm in trouble. And Jesus doesn't want to be harsh either. He wants to be forgiving, but he wants us to be forgiving. He wants us to be understanding. He wants us to... Okay, if we do have to judge, to do so with humility, knowing that we have lots of mistakes as well. And so having that kindness or and that understanding, that, that forgiving spirit in our own heart will lead to good deeds, right? Will lead to good fruit because we have the store of goodness in our own heart. Yes, we're going to see people who make mistakes. Yes, we see them do bad things. 
and and oftentimes we'll have to call a spade a spade. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to condemn them necessarily at all, right? That's not our place. It's not our place to condemn. It's not our our place to to um, you know, damn somebody. No, no, that's not ours. Jesus wants to forgive. He forgives you and me. We also want to be forgiving in our own hearts, in our own thoughts. So Jesus, I want to be understanding. I want to be patient and kind in my words to people. Help me live it in my heart, in my thoughts, with my family members, with my colleagues at work, with someone who cuts me off in traffic. And that way we will be that good person who produces good fruit out of the store of goodness in our hearts. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.